This is the 80s show on iHeartRadio. So, for most of us, it's Monday. Giant bag of suck. That uh, soul-destroying drudgery, known as the Daily Grind, resumes once again as we rush headlong into a week of trading time for money. Working exceptionally hard. To give the very best we can to the people that matter the most. Yep, it's Monday. And Mondays are gut-wrenchingly awful. It's just a thing. But think about about how you'd feel if you didn't have something to get up to. Get up and go to on a Monday. What then? You ever been unemployed for a while? You ever sort of like lacked routine? You ever lacked having the sense that you have a place in society, a place in the world? Being unemployed is tough. And it's not just tough because you got to, you know, find alternative ways of coming up with green foldy stuff that you use to buy food and pay rent with. Being unemployed takes a toll on your psyche. It really does. I know, I let's see here. I know a couple of people who are currently unemployed. And you know what's very interesting? What's very interesting about them is they uh for one reason or another, are fine financially. They're essentially on vacation. They have nothing to do and no worries whatsoever. One guy I know was unfairly fired. He got a huge settlement from the company he worked for. Another guy I know uh, sold a house. He's got enough money to coast on for, I don't know, at least the next year or so. And what's interesting is that sounds like a dream situation for either one of those people yet you talk to them and they're going through some of the worst times of their life they've hit rock bottom why it's not because of the financial hardship i mean look there's the cloud of uncertainty looming over them when their uh their their stash runs out and i suppose if you have any kind of excess funds if you're a responsible type of person you want to put that in the bank and keep adding to it You want your rainy day fund to grow. You don't want to be eating through it on a rainy day. But this doesn't seem to be bothering those folks. It's not the money. It's not the money that destroys you. I mean, look, it doesn't help. Being in a rough financial situation is no good for anyone. No good for anyone at all. But what I've gleaned from talking to my friends that are in this spot of unemployment at the moment is that they both in some way, shape, or form, hit rock bottom. They've really discovered a very dark place within their soul. (laughs) I mean, I won't go into details. I won't pack the bus over them on the air. But they've been dealing with some serious stuff, some serious doubts about who they are, some serious doubts about life and is it worth living. And this comes from taking away the ability to get up in the morning and go to a place where you might despise it. You might hate every moment that you're in your place of employment. But it has absolutely killed their soul to not have a functioning part of this mechanism we call society. It's a weird toll that it takes on your mind when you don't have something to get up and go to. First and foremost, the lack of routine really eats at you. Second of all, If you're like me, and pretty much everybody I know, part of what gives you the wherewithal to make it through this game called life is the fact that you feel like you're a contributing member of society, that you play a part, that you play a role. It might be a small role, but it's a vital role. You leave the world a better place than you find it every single day through your job. You are creating something, no matter what it is that you do. And to take that away from someone does incredible damage to the soul. So why then are thousands of people in this country not up for the task of going to some kind of job or some kind of work? What's happening in Maine at the moment has shone a light on 
the weirdness of human nature in this country at the moment. We'll get into it later on in the show. iHeartRadio shines the spotlight on Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses formed in Los Angeles, California in 1985. The classic lineup assigned to Geffen Records in 1986 consisted of vocalist Axel Rose, lead guitarist Slash, rhythm guitarist Izzy Stradlin, bassist Duff McKagan, and drummer Stephen Adler. The band released six studio albums, accumulating sales of more than 100 million albums worldwide. A year after its release, Guns N' Roses' debut album, Appetite for Destruction, reached number one on the Billboard 200 on the strength of the hit Sweet Child of Mine. The album has sold in excess of 28 million copies worldwide, including 18 million units sold in the United States. The success of their debut is followed by their well-received GNR Lies in 1988. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Guns N' Roses coming up iHeartRadio goes one-on-one with Mike Rutherford to discuss the art of songwriting. I've learned one thing over the years is that actually you can't control it. You can't force it. You can't analyze it. You can't worry about it. You just go and have a good time and mess around and then something comes along and you grab it. You know, you, you, it's something intangible. And if you try and make a program on how to do it and do it better, you get lost. So I just, it's, it's like a free-form thing which you just, you can't control. You just let it Ride or not ride. And if it's not working, then you just have a break. That's what I've learned. Keep listening to iHeartRadio for more Mike Rutherford and all your favorite artists. Tell iHeartRadio what you want to hear. Use the thumb up and thumb down buttons to let our programmers know how to make iHeartRadio sound our best. Oh gosh, do we do we sound like a radio show now, Funkhauser? Does that sound better? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I I have no, uh, you know, usually I would uh, usually. <sighs> Sounds like you got a case of the Mondays over there. <laughs> well, it just you know, like somebody comes in there on the weekend and pushes buttons. I'm gonna peel back the curtain just a little bit. Gonna peel back the curtain just a little bit and uh, and let people know what the hell is going on around here. There's a uh, there's uh, there, there's this thing that uh, our microphone our, our microphones go through before they hit the air, and I can hear it now. It's still not right. It's still a giant bag of suck, and uh, it's called mic processing, and uh, it's one of the toughest things in the world to dial in. The engineers around here certainly don't know how to do it, and um, I. Uh, Somebody moved my stuff last week. Someone changed my settings, so I, I uh, diligently fixed them on Friday. Came in here on a Monday, and I don't know what the hell goes on around here over the weekend, but certainly nothing that would require that you change the processing in here. And uh, man, I'm, I'm, uh, it's just all bad. It makes me very stabby. It, it sounds. Does it sound weird, Funkhauser? Uh, I think you're okay now. Oh, it feels weird. It sounds different in my headphones. It's very distracting. It's unbelievably annoying. God, is it ever Monday? Ugh. Hey, shall we periscope this show, Funkhauser? Seeing as, you know, we're off to such a flying start. And I don't we're know, such man. A tremendously good mood. Sounds like we're all full of kinks this morning. <laughs> yeah, let's, sure. Let's, let's try uh, periscoping this. Let, let's peel back the curtain. So I don't know if you use Periscope, but uh, we're, we're going to give it a go. Obviously, I won't be able to look at Periscope while I'm on the air. But during the break, All right, I guess I'll do it too. And perhaps you can add to the conversation, should you want to do that. Uh, what's, what's this music we're listening to, Punk Hazard? Oh, you're just t- telling us about uh, processing and stuff. So it's, you know, education. Oh, right. This is peeling back yeah, the curtain right. music. 
This shows effing education. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's do the news. Fine. Ba, 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 ba. I like it when you uh, scat sing the news. <laughs> Shoo ba da bop, bop, boo doop, blow. 80 on the radio news time, 918. <laughs> Uh, Game of Thrones earned a massive 24 Emmy nominations. Right. To uh, put that number in perspective, you take the total number of Emmy nominations earned by all the various Kardashian shows, and you add 24. <laughs> oh, look at that. It says my internet connection's too slow. Honestly. Uh, see, I, I told I, why you. is it? Why, like, I, <laughs> Something's in there today. Oh, my God. Something, it's, it's so Monday. Uh, I've been good, though. I haven't had one of these outbursts in a very long, long time, right? <laughs> yes. You've been very good lately. People have not yeah. been moving your cheese. And now I think it's my turn to complain. Oh, really? Yeah, but I'll start later in the week. Are we allowed to name who we're complaining about? I mean, I guess so. I mean, it is a celebratory event. So I'm not like saying, cool. oh, it sucks. I just have to move. Because uh, somebody's going to be in here doing stuff. Oh. So wait, wait, wait. We had this uh, idea that we are going to be able to say live from the Rush Limbaugh Studios. Do we not get to say that now? Uh, I'm still asking for the key. i got to ask 12 people for the key to the Rush Studio. <laughs> <laughs> they all have to turn it at the same time. <laughs> Click. Like some I really ritual. Want I want to be able- I want to be able to say live from the Rush Limbaugh Studios and then hopefully have it get back to him in Florida at his uh, <laughs> Limbaugh compound in Florida. Be like, wait a second. What are they doing here? Spinning all over the media golden... doesn't want you to know. Spinning all over the golden microphone here. <laughs> um, all right. Despite winning four Emmys in the past for Best Comedy Actor. Yeah. T- TLC has canceled 19 Kids and Counting. Uh, are those yeah. two things that go together? No, they're not. Uh-huh. <laughs> TLC has canceled 19 Kids and Counting. Uh, Michelle Duggar, so upset about it. She got pregnant. <laughs> the premiere of the fall, Emmy- 20 kids and counting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, news keeps getting worse for Jared Fogle. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think the guy who won four Emmys in, in the past for uh, Best Comedy Actor is that dude, Jim Parsons. Oh. You know, from uh, Big Bang Theory. Bazinga. He's actually, he's, uh, yeah, Bazinga. He's actually from Houston, Texas. And uh, he was left off this year's list of nominees. I believe uh, he consoled himself, though, by wiping his tears away with his $9 million paycheck. He'll be just fine. Just fine, I tell you. Just fine. Go on. Vin Diesel turned 48. Mm. Hmm. Don't be bummed if you jumped out of a cake and yelled, Happy birthday, if he uh, didn't act surprised. It's not that he wanted to hurt your feelings. It's just that he can't act. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He sure can't drive, though. Well, right, yeah, and and, uh, and he celebrated this year as he does every year with his brother Bio. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, wait I like for it. it. Bio, it's a Diesel. thinker. It's a grower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a grower. When you laugh at on the way home, David he has- says about all of his stuff that doesn't la- <laughs> land. Yeah, you'll laugh at that on the way home. Ah, go on. David Hasselhoff is now sixty-three. Yep, his kids took him to his favorite place to eat for his birthday. <laughs> A hotel room floor. <laughs> He's at the age now, 63. The Hoff is 63 years old. Hoff is 63 years old. I think he's at the age now where his top drink mixer is Metamucil. Man, he looks great. He really does. Like, I don't know. Like, I watched uh, I, I watched Knight Rider on Netflix. <laughs> like, I, I watched Knight Rider on Netflix. Have you, uh, have you gone back and watched any of that? Nope. Give it a go. Like... <laughs> It's so funny. Watch it with a female and uh, watch your eyes get wide as a young David Hasselhoff <laughs> takes it, takes a stage. Like, you know, I wasn't really, you know, you and I aren't old enough to have been around, uh, to have been aware of his effect on females. But that is a guy that I think for the last 40 years or so has been able to make women's midsection sing Sweet Virginia. Like, a young David Hasselhoff, like... Seriously, watch old Night Riders with a girl sitting next to you, and just 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 watch her reaction when he comes on screen. It's a little it's a little unsettling. 
And you got to remember, he was famous before AIDS. That guy must have gotten so much action back in the day. Like just the fact that AIDS came along and killed that part of his life, I would imagine, probably contributed to his drinking. Like, I, I wonder what it's like to be really, really, really ridiculously good looking. It's got to be very strange. You can always ask me. <laughs> uh, the parents of late singer Selena say uh, they're planning a hologram tour. Yeah, I saw that. Late singer Selena. Her parents planning a hologram tour provided, of course, that they can't think of an even creepier way to shamelessly exploit their dead daughter's image. That's just weird. A hologram tour of Selena? Not okay. By the way, if you're hitting us up on Periscope, I can't really look at what you're saying until uh, until we get to the break. And then I will take yeah, it. Yeah, you, you, you just get way too distracted. People are yeah, like, I'm hey, I'll see you. Hey, I'll see you. Heart, 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 heart. Yeah, everyone... Uh, <laughs> Everyone was like, oh, you should periscope your show. I was like, I can't, I can't be, I'm so, I'm so OCD and ADD already that it's going to be almost impossible to do that, but I'm going to give it a go. Anyways, go on. Uh, Michael Douglas told a reporter at a screening of Ant-Man that he has a big penis. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael Douglas bragging about the size of his cash and prizes. Yeah, the fact that he arrived to the interview in a Porsche tells me otherwise, but go on. <laughs> George Lucas was named a Kennedy Center honoree. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucas is now looking forward to getting nerds to buy his acceptance speech in 19 different formats. Do you have the Blu-ray of my acceptance speech? Do you have the added extras? Uh, do you have the DVD extras for my acceptance speech? Don't forget about the commentary. Go on. Primatologist? Mm, the study of primates. Oh. Primatologist Natalia Reagan says Bigfoot uh -huh. probably has a tiny penis. Was this an answer to the question, how are Michael Douglas and Bigfoot different? <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the Loch Ness Monster was all like, don't look at me, I'm hung like a sperm whale. Go on. A new poll says Donald Trump is unpopular with Latino voters. <laughs> yeah, you, you suppose? <laughs> okay. Uh, sort of like saying kryptonite is unpopular with Superman. Go on. The most popular boy's baby name of 2015 is... Atticus. Mm. Atticus. Oh, yeah. Well, you know that... Um, Weren't they the a crappy punk to... rock band from the... <laughs> I think there was a cra crappy punk rock band called Atticus. But, like, what's what's interesting is that Atticus, you know, uh, most people when they think Atticus are thinking Atticus Finch to kill a mockingbird. And uh, <laughs> the sequel to uh, To Kill a Mockingbird Bird was recently released, and Atticus grows up into an incredible racist 20 years later. It takes place 20 years in the future after To Kill a Mockingbird happens, and like all these people have been naming their child after this literary figure who, uh, figure who in the sequel, years later, turns out to be not the greatest guy. It's, it's a bit of double-edged sword at the moment. Uh, the most popular grown woman's name of 2015 is Cosby Accuser. Go on. <laughs> Uh, one in six people think emojis could eventually replace the English language. Yeah. There's a name for these people. Illiterate. <laughs> Fr frowny face, thumbs down. Frowny face, thumbs down, Fantasia, Fantasia Barino. Go Sun on. Sunflower. Uh, people who have sex two or three times a week make 4.5% more than their coworkers. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Like, if you feel like uh, you're not getting what you're owed in the workplace, apparently... Um, apparently the way you can change that situation is to collect in the bedroom slightly more often. And who knows exactly why this is, but I don't know, maybe they're go-getters in, in a different way. But people who do it two to three times a week make four and a half percent more than their coworkers, unless they're prostitutes. Then they make way, way less. <laughs> go on. There's this new app, new dating uh -huh. app that I'm downloading yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for dog lovers, it's called Tin Dog. Hmm. All you need is a phone and tons of loneliness. No, I, actually, if I was uh, if I was out looking for love online, Tin Dog would probably be a place that I would I would give it a go. Do you, you know, do you, put a, like, do you put your your dog as your featured picture, or you with your dog? I don't. I don't know. Why don't you download Tin Dog and, we'll and weigh out. in on us? Or weigh in on it? Yeah. I don't know. I think that um, if you're a dog person. The idea of not being with a dog person is 
Yeah, it's tough. Well, I don't know. Funkhauser. Dog versus you are cats. Up. I can't date a girl that has a cat. Really? Yeah. You know, um, it seems prejudiced, <laughs> being that you have like eight, like a, a big gang of dogs. Yeah. Why? Why could you not tolerate a cat? Well, you can't put them together. I guess. Well, I don't know. I, guess I have a dog could. and a cat in the house. I have a dog and a cat in the house, but like where I live has lots of sort of like levels. It's sort of this weird thing without walls. Yeah, like there's lots of sort mm. of, I don't know. And, and so there's lots of places for the cat to escape to when the dog goes nuts. So, yeah, I don't know. And Milhouse enjoys chasing the cat every day. It's a, <laughs> it's part of his, it's part of Milhouse's rap. You know? All right, I'll, I'll give Chicks with Cats an, another try. But, okay, well, like, I mean, but you bring up a valid point. Like, if you are trying to date someone that has an animal in the house, if you're trying to date someone with an animal in the house, you got to make sure that, you know, should you, um, should you like each other and want to take things one step further and maybe start cohabiting, that uh, <laughs> you, want, you, you want to make sure the animals get along. So that's not always a given. So I could see that. I don't know. There, there's a guy that I work with, like one of the whipping boys on one of the morning shows around here that has a dog, loves his dog, but doesn't want to date a girl with his dog because he's like, oh, my dog needs a lot of attention and I want her to be able to stay over. And, you know, like I can't I can't leave my dog home alone. So she has to come over to my place. And if she has a do- if she has a dog, she's got to go home to her dog. You know, it's a whole big thing. I don't know. Must love dogs would be preferable if you didn't have your own. Just additional love for mine. Thanks. USA Headline News. I'm Kelly Sloan. The UN Security Council unanimously endorsed the nuclear deal between Iran and six world powers this morning. The resolution also authorizes a series of measures leading to an end of UN sanctions. Congress will discuss the issue today. Wyoming Senator John Barrasso says it's a bad deal. Now we're going to have Iran with nuclear weapons as well as, I believe, a nuclear arms race in the Middle East. He spoke in a Fox News interview. It is a historic day for U.S.-Cuban relations. The agreement between the two countries to resume normal ties is in effect. The Cuban flag now hangs in the lobby of the U.S. State Department alongside those of other nations with which the United States has diplomatic relations. Havana and Washington still are very far apart on many issues and now both sides say is when the really tricky work begins. That was AP correspondent Peter Orsi. This is USA Headline News. Brought to you by Honda. Start something special with great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or visit your local Honda dealer. And golf final round of the 144th Open Championship is going on right now at St. Andrews in Scotland. Check the leaderboard. It's still Jason Day, Louis Oosthuizen, and the amateur Paul Dunn. Tied at 12 under par. One stroke in front of Jordan Spieth, who's looking for his third consecutive major. Now Day and Spieth will tee off at 9.20 Eastern. Oosthuizen and Dunn at 9.30 Eastern. Those are the final two pairings of the day. As far as players out on the course making no noise today, right now, Phil Mickelson is through 60 
18 holes, 6 under for the day, 10 under for the tournament. He's two shots back. An amateur and American, Oliver Snyderjans, threw 15 holes, 6 under for the day, 10 under for the tournament, and two shots off the lead. In baseball, the Dodgers beat the Nationals 5 0. Zach Granke tossed 8 shutout innings. He now has a scoreless streak of 43 and 2 thirds innings. I'm Eddie Garcia. We are iHeartRadio shines the spotlight on John Mellencamp. Singing in a forceful, expressive raps, he unleashed a string of rock solid albums in the 80s. Uh huh, Scarecrow, a Lonesome Jubilee, and Big Daddy. Restored surname, crediting those four albums to John Cougar Mellencamp. He was now a songwriter to be reckoned with, and years of accumulated angst erupted in songs that spoke for the passions and frustrations of the average person trying to make a go of it in hard times. On these records, he had become something of a musical weather vane, gauging which way the winds were blowing in Middle America. Listening to iHeartRadio for more John Mellencamp and all your favorite artists. How to deal with someone who says that's so gay? Outsmart them. This party is like so gay. Totally. Excuse me, but did you ladies know the word gay used to mean happy or excited? Then it became a word used to describe gay people. Then somehow it came to mean dumb or stupid, which is how you just used it, which is not very nice. Ew, that guy is on the football team and super smart, and he totally hates us now. Totally. When you say that's so gay, do you realize what you say? Knock it off. Learn more at thinkbeforeyouspeak.com. Brought to you by Glisten and the Ad Council. Go ahead, favorite the show, and enjoy AD on the go. iHeartRadio presents AD. All righty then, Funkhauser. Let's roll through the news and then uh, talk a little bit more about um, <laughs> talk a little bit more about what's happened in Maine. Uh, in case you're not familiar with what's going on around there in Maine, well. I think it's a fantastic idea, and I've been looking for the downside to the situation for a while now. But in Maine, they have this thing where if you're going to be on food stamps, you got to do something for them. Now, this doesn't mean that if you have kids to look after or if you're disabled, you're forced to do something for them. If you have kids to look after, if you have dependents, if you're disabled, you can just collect the food stamps. Although I'm sure they could find a way to make it work. But no, there's actually sort of like work requirements and volunteering requirements if you're going to be on food stamps in the state of Maine. And uh, now there's a whole lot less people getting food stamps because they refuse to show up for this stuff. It's crazy. And I've been thinking, I, I've been trying to play devil's advocate here. Because, like, right off the bat, this is something that I've always wanted to do whenever I've heard about the idea of food stamps, about any kind of sort of, like, benefits. It's like, oh, it's just not unreasonable to expect somebody to do something in return for them. Well, you don't have a job. We can give you something to do. We can make you into that contributing member of society that it's so important to be. Especially when you're out of work and you're looking for a sense of value, you look at love value, you're looking for a sense of contribution, you are looking for something that you want to do that can add to the world as opposed to just take away from it and lose your sense of purpose. I always thought that was a great idea. Yet, there's literally to the tune of thousands, thousands of people refusing to do this in Maine. And Maine's been very cut and dry about it. Like, all right, if you're not going to show up for your volunteer work or your job training, you're done. No more free food for you, which I think is a fantastic idea. And I've been like pushing this around in my mind ever since I found out about it, trying to look for the downside to it. Because on this show, we uh, we don't consider things to be black or white. We know that there's a gray area to a lot of things. And uh, in the gray is usually where you're going to find the truth. People are made comfortable by a simple, easy to understand narrative. It's right or it's wrong. It's very clear and easy to find and easy for uh, stupid people to understand which one is right or wrong. It doesn't require critical thinking. It doesn't require knowing your true self. It just requires listening to someone that trumpets out a bunch of crap that you are happy to believe because that's a simple, easy to understand narrative on which America thrives. No, things aren't black and white. Like I said, 
the gray is where you're going to find the truth a lot of the time. And this is where that show inhabits. We live in the gray in the search of truth on this show. Yet, I've been trying to come up with a downside to sort of making people do stuff for the food stamps that they're getting, like they're doing in Maine. And I just, I, I can't, can't come up with one. And like we said, it doesn't matter if you're disabled. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, if you're disabled, they're not going to make you go to work. If you have dependents, if you have kids, you know, like a single mom being forced to go out and do something when she has kids at home to take care of, mm, that's not good. And so that's okay. If you have dependents, if you're disabled, you're not forced to go to work or you're not forced to volunteer or you're not forced to participate in job training. Job training. They're going to give you job training. A lot of people have to go to college for that. They're just going to give it to you along with your free food, yet people are refusing to show up for this. And we'll get into all that in just a little bit. Right now, though, let's roll through what remains of the news, Funkhouse, or what else is going on in the world. Well, the front man for Three Doors Down stopped a concert to scream at a man who hit a woman. Yeah, I saw that. Very valiant of him. That poor woman. Not only did she get punched, but even worse, some cruel bastard made her sit through a Three Doors Down concert. It was funny. I looked at that show. I was like, wow, Three Doors Down is still a thing. There's a lot of people there to see him. It's kind of cool. They're sort of existing outside the... uh, They were like these huge stars with tons of radio hits for a very long time. And now they just kind of go out, do their thing, and people show up. Independent of whether or not they're getting played on the radio. They've carved out a really cool spot for themselves. It doesn't make me like their music, but they've carved out a really cool spot for themselves where they don't require a big record label. They don't require tons of airplay on MTV and uh, radio like they started with to uh, get the job done when it comes to putting asses in seats. Good for them. What else? Uh, The founder of the annual Lebowski Fest was arrested (laughs) for smoking weed at a bowling alley. Yeah. Celebration of all things Lebowski. The founder of the annual Lebowski Fest arrested for smoking weed at the bowling alley. In news that is equally surprising, America continues to question the effectiveness of its gun laws. People argued in the Middle East, and a Kardashian posted a selfie. Shocker. Go on. Dog the Bounty Hunter is being sued for misrepresenting another bounty hunter on his TV show. Funkhauser, do you have the uh, Karate Kid music yes, ready, I'm ready that we use for uh, moments of high hilarity on this show? Yeah, I'm ready. You're, you're going to need it now. Dog the Bounty Hunter being sued for misrepresenting another bounty hunter on his TV show. <clears throat> Dog has not yet responded to the suit because he needs time to wait for it. Mullet over. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. That's worth your price of admission here today. Go on. Uh, Disney, the Disney, Disney firmly stated that they never approved the use of Star Wars characters in Amy Schumer's Schumer's GQ photo shoot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Did you see Amy Schumer's Star Wars? Theme GQ photo shoot. I did. Blurred and unblurred. Did you? Blurred and unblurred. Good for her. You know what's interesting? The, the more famous she gets, the more people are saying, oh, Amy Schumer's hot. <laughs> like, it's very, it's interesting what fame does to someone's perception. And it's not like she's got nipped or tucked or anything. She looks the same as she always did. And I always thought she kind of had something, something going on. But, like, people are obsessed with her. Like, men are just like, oh, God, I wish I had a chick like Amy Schumer. I was like, what, you mean someone that's attractive but not too attractive yet has a filthy mouth and an active mind? And they're like, yeah, so hot. I was like, you know what? I'm really glad that Amy Schumer is out there doing what she's doing. If I have her daughter, I hope she's not hot. Like, I hope that's not her thing, you know? Like, when you're a hot chick, it's just... It, you get put into a strange place. I want, if I have a daughter, I want her for to be attractive enough. I, I want for her to be attractive enough to feel okay about herself. But I don't want her identity to be, I'm a hot chick. Because it's, it's really strange what society does to hot chicks. It's very, very odd. And uh, Amy Schumer, she's right in that groove of just being like, totally, totally, you know, like, attractive enough to feel good about herself to where she doesn't have to question that although i mean when she first came out in uh in the world of show businesses show business people were riding her about her looks and her weight and all this sort of stuff and she was just like i'm really kind of okay with absolutely everything in fact she received uh she was (laughs) 
she got some sort of award. I don't remember what it was, but she was like, this is so awesome. I'm a size 13, and I can catch a D anytime I want to. I was like, yes, you go, girl. Um, although, in that respect, I hope my daughter is not like Andy Schumer. Uncle Sam bends me over with no lube every April, and I'm proud to be an American, but I'm getting really hateful. Billionaires and losers both get their asses bailed out, and I'm stuck in the middle like a sucker giving handouts. So be healthy, be healthy, and leech on the welfare line. I'm busting my ass every day for every last damn time, and nobody in my life has ever handed me nothing. So now I want that all back, and I ain't even bluffing. Let's uh, roll through what remains of the news and get to the uh, pressing issues of today. Donald Trump and food stamps. Uh, One of the footballs Tom Brady used in the Deflategate game sold Uh at auction for $43,740. Yeah. The guy who got it thinks it's going to be worth more soon. You know, when when adjusted for inflation. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Go on. Donald Trump said John McCain isn't a war hero because he was captured. Oh. You know. Mm -mm. Burn. (laughs) Uh, I think analysts were surprised by the attack since McCain isn't a Mexican. (laughs) Yep. Because, you know, the real act of courage is firing Gary Busey and Meatloaf from Celebrity Apprentice. Hero. (laughs) Hero, I tell you. Hero. Uh, (laughs) He felt like McCain should have avoided capture. If he wanted to be a hero, McCain should have. If he wanted to be a hero in Donald Trump's eyes, Trump feels like McCain should have avoided capture. You know, that whole prisoner of war thing. Ooh, yeah, no. It, you're, it, anyone that's ever been a prisoner of war, uh, according to Donald Trump, you're, you're no longer a hero. Just so we're crystal clear on this. You should have avoided capture. Like the way uh, Donald Trump avoided the Vietnam draft. Go on, Funkhauser. Uh, Donald Trump said he couldn't serve in Vietnam because he had bone spurs in one of his feet. What's, mm. what's that? Bone spurs? It's like it's just like additional pieces of bone or calcium deposits on your feet that make you slightly. Sounds like a stretch to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He uh, he still has a foot problem, and now he just seems to get them stuck in his mouth on a regular basis. Go on. Japan is close to passing legislation that would increase their military power. For the first time since World War II. Mm. Partly because they're worried about China. Mostly because they're concerned about Godzilla. Go on. <laughs> Look out! Uh, <laughs> a picture surfaced of a young Queen Elizabeth giving the Nazi salute. 
Yeah. Yeek. Ew, that's the kind of stuff that gets you fired from a job. If you had one. Which she does not. So she's okay. Her father was apparently a, a, a sympathizer with Hitler. He was all into it. People did not see that one coming. Uh, all right, then. Da, 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 da. <sighs> um, <laughs> Donald Trump, like we alluded to earlier, this is an interesting one. Donald Trump has gone on the record saying John McCain is not a war hero. Why? Because he was captured. So if you've been lauded as a war hero, if you were a prisoner of war and you were lauded as a war hero in the past, too bad. So sad. I'm sorry. Donald Trump now says, mm, yeah, if you got camp- captured, you-, you don't count. Guy who wasn't in any sort of military services made this sort of uh, sweeping generalization. Last week, Senator John McCain said that Donald Trump had, quote, fired up the crazies during a rally in his home state of Arizona. Trump replied in typically presidential fashion by calling McCain a dummy. This past Saturday, just gone by, Trump was speaking at something called the 2015 Family Leadership Summit. And he was asked if he should have said that about a war hero like McCain. And he replied, quote, he's not a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? okay? I hate to tell you. What, what the hell does that even mean? Nobody really knows. I mean, there's one thing about Trump, though. It's his unflinching devotion to this idea that absolutely everything that comes out of his mouth, even in the heat of the moment when he's been put in a tough spot, is right. It's just so many cogent, awesome points that someone like Trump makes. He just it comes out of his retarded, idiot mouth. This, this mouth that has just it doesn't know how to talk to people, I think, is a thing. Trump doesn't know how to talk to people. There's a lot of people like, oh, Donald Trump's ridiculous. The idea of him for president is ridiculous. Because of the way he conducts himself in public and with other people, yeah. But there's some stuff about his run for presidency that I think we can all relate to. Like the whole thing, you know, where he basically said, well, Mexicans are bad and bring drugs and crime to America. Uh got to walk that back a little bit and use some facts and some clarifications and language that doesn't make you sound like, oh, I don't know, a giant bigoted racist. But we have border control problems in this country. There is a crime problem in this country that comes directly from Mexican drug cartels running drugs across our borders. The Donald makes some very interesting, cogent points and address some stuff in a very hard-line manner that some folks just aren't willing to do. And it would be awesome if he didn't just F it up by being a giant idiot when it came to knowing how to talk to other people. Anyways, he went on the record saying McCain was not a war hero. He said he's a war hero because he was captured. I like people who weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. I like people who weren't captured. And he does have this irrevocable commitment to the stuff that comes out of his mouth. Which is one of the few things I like about him. It doesn't matter how stupid what he says is. He's going to commit to it. But then he did, uh, instead of sticking with it, he walked it back a tiny bit. He said perhaps he's a war hero, but right now he said some very bad things about a lot of people. Now, for those of you that don't know, McCain was shot down in 1967 on his 23rd bombing mission during the Vietnam War and spent more than five years as a prisoner of war. Five years. He fractured both arms and a leg, ejecting from his plane. He nearly drowned when he landed in a lake. Enemy soldiers pulled him ashore, crushed his, soldier, crushed his shoulder with a rifle butt, and bayoneted him. He was offered an early release in 1968 in part because his father was a high-ranking military official, but he refused. He refused his early release in 1968. He did not roll with a silver spoon in his mouth. He refused, unless his fellow prisoners were also released. Yeah, definitely not a hero. So he remained a prisoner of the North Vietnamese until 1973. In 1968, because of his father's status in the military, they offered to let him out. He said, no, unless my fellow prisoners are released. Do the math. Five extra years for standing up for your fellow man. 
He underwent regular beatings. He underwent torture along the way. To this day, he can't even raise his arms above his head because of the injuries that he suffered in 1968 to 1973 as a prisoner of war in Vietnam after having ejected from his plane, fractured both arms and a leg, and then almost drowned, then being bayoneted before he was taken and subjected to five years of torture. So Trump's comments pretty much united the rest of the Republican presidential field against him. Jeb Bush called them slanderous. Lindsey Graham called them stupid. Rick Perry called them disgraceful. Marco Rubio called them offensive. Some of them wouldn't attack Trump directly, but issued statements of support for McCain. Yesterday, Trump called into ABC's This Week, where Martha Roddick's grilled him about all this, and he straight up refused to apologize. It's that unerring dedication to his own personal narrative, that unswerving confidence in the idea that everything that comes out of his mouth is absolutely right, no matter how idiotic and stupid and poorly thought out it is, that makes him what it is, I think. But, uh, yeah, he refused to apologize. Instead, he went off about how McCain does nothing for our veterans. Well, he has done a lot for him, quote unquote. Of course, she also asked him about the four deferments that kept Trump out of Vietnam, and he absolutely dodged it. You know, look, I'm not, uh, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy that's going to uh, say I'm right and you're wrong, and if you disagree with me on this, you're, you're out of your effing mind. I try and play devil's advocate. A lot of people said Trump was absolutely ridiculous. And look, he's a ridiculous example of a human being. He really is. That said, that said, he made some interesting and cogent points that I wish could be adopted by uh, some presidential hopefuls that were not so bat ass crazy. But it is getting harder and harder and harder to find anything to play de- devil's advocate uh, about when you're talking about Donald Trump. A guy who dodged the draft numerous times, saying that someone who was shot down behind enemy lines and spent five years in prison, a sentence that could have been shortened, a sentence that could have been shortened, but wasn't because John McCain refused to take the silver spoon in his mouth, get out of his fate that involved torture, that involved... God knows what in the hands of the enemy during Vietnam. He refused unless his fellow prisoners were also released. And to call this guy not a hero, boy, that narrative of what's a hero and what's bravery sure changes with politics. So effing hypocritical. So uh, <clears throat> Maine has dropped 9,000 people from food stamps after they refused to comply with work requirements. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this, but Republican government, uh, government, oh God, it's effing Monday, like you wouldn't believe. Republican Governor Paul LePage recently started enforcing Maine's volunteer and work requirements for food stamp SNAP recipients to keep their benefits. The end result, 9,000 non-disabled adults who didn't have dependents got dropped from the program. Now look, the rules prevent adults who are not disabled and do not have dependents from receiving food stamps for more than three weeks unless they work at least 20 hours a week. Now this work that you're forced to do if you are being fed by the state, if you're being fed off of the blood, sweat, and tears of hardworking Americans, this 20 hours a week is participating in work training programs. Or meeting volunteer guidelines for 24 hours out of the month. 24 hours out of the month. That's all you got to do. Any one of those three getting met will not result in the loss of your food benefits. Let's do the math here. The least difficult of those requirements is fulfilling an approved volunteer position of 24 hours out of the entire month. The hardest thing... The hardest option for keeping your food stamps is doing 20 hours of on-the-job work per week. 24 hours a month is not a bad deal for receiving hundreds of dollars of free food. I think in Maine, says that the average SNAP monthly benefit is around $477 per month. 
In most cases, it's more. For 24 hours of volunteering, that's making about 20 bucks an hour. Not a bad gig. Funkhauser, do you make 20 bucks an hour? Uh, sometimes. You do? Sometimes. I need a different job. Anyways, in Maine, 9,000 able-bodied people who are too poor to feed themselves couldn't handle that. Even more of a drastic measure, people in Maine who uh, lose their benefits in such a manner, they can't regain assistance for three years. This idea of government dependence has been sold so well that even doing 24 hours of approved volunteer work for a month for a capable adult has become too much for more than 9,000 people. You know what? I really hope every single other state in the nation adopts this policy. I've looked for a downside to it. I can't find it. Get training. You could be paying for a trade school or you could get free food and free training from the state to better your life. Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach him how to fish. Oh, he's not really interested in that. He'd rather stay home. Go figure. 